Anya here and I'm back with another video for Ophelia Talks and today we are making a wind spin. Look at it go! I have really enjoyed designing this wind spinner and I hope you will enjoy making it. So let's get started. I am going to use DK yarn. I have some leftovers here. I'm making my slip knot. I'm going to insert my hook and I always use a three and a half for my Starcraft special DK that I use. Even though it's prescribed as a four, I use a three and a half for my tension. So use the hook that you usually use for the yarn that you are using. Now we are going to start chaining. So yarn over and pull through the loop on your hook, yarn over, pull through and so on. And to be honest, you can chain however many you want. If you chain about 50 or 60, that will give you a good size. 100 to 120 will be quite long. So the longer you want it, chain more. I am not going to count my chains today because obviously you don't need to, but I just want to make a shorter one um, because I want to make this for hanging above a baby's cot. So I think this one might be long enough, but like I said, you know, work towards 100 if you would like a really nice long one. Okay, so I've done my chain and for this pattern we are going to start at the start each time. So you crochet your way to the end, then we're going to cut off the yarn and then we go back to the start and start again there. But to make sure we know which one is our start, I'm just going to put a little knot in this end here. And this will tell us that, in fact, this is where we need to start. So I'm going to take my hook out, pull it out, and I am going to start again. Even though I am using the same colour, I am still going to cut off and start again. So I make my slip knot again, insert your hook, and go to the first chain that you made and we are going to insert into the first chain like so and we are going to do a single crochet just as if we were already crocheting there we go and in this row you are going to be doing one single crochet in each chain along your chain So I've nearly made it to the end. There we go. Okay, so I've made it to the end. Once again, I am going to cut off the yarn, pull through, and I'm going to go back to the start to start my next row and start with a new color this time. So I am going to be using the pistachio color here. Make your slip knot. Insert your hook. And go to the beginning. So we have on one side, we have just the one strand left over from your chain that you've already used. And on this side, I can see the V's of the stitches that we made just now, the V's of those single crochets. So now we are going to be placing in each V, we are going to be placing two double crochets. So a double crochet, that means you have to yarn over first, you insert into the V there, pull up a loop, 
yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And the same thing again, because of course we are doing two double crochets in each stitch. So you work your way along your row, making two double crochets under each V. to do of course that last one you just need to hold on to the end because otherwise it might come undone there we go okay once again lay it down cut it off pull it through and go back to the beginning there we go, because here is yeah the one with the little knot. There we go. So now on top of the pistachio, of course, we are going to do our next color. And once again, do your slip knot, insert your hook and take up your work. And generally for me, this first stitch just closes up. I'm not even going to try. I mean, I could go in there, but I'm not even going to try that. I'm just going to go into the next V there. And this time in this row, we are going to do double crochets and we are going to place three double crochets in each V, in each stitch that you see. So insert, pull up a loop, Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, as if you were already crocheting. A second one and a third one. There we go. And this is what we will be doing in each stitch. So in a way, you've doubled the amount of chains and single crochets. So single crochets, we didn't increase. But then the next row, we doubled our stitches. And now, of course, we are going to triple the doubled stitches. <laughs> I really don't want to think how many stitches we need to be doing. But what I do know is this is a fantastic, enjoyable little project to make. And you have such a lovely object towards the end of it. So come back to me to show you how I am going to do my last row and of course also I'm going to put a tassel on aren't I I mean what is a project without a tassel nothing <laughs> you know me and my tassels <laughs> okay so continue placing your three double crochets into each stitch and I will meet you at the end of the row. And don't worry what it's going to be looking like, I will explain to you how to lay them nicely. And I am just doing the last few stitches of my gold row here. And there we go. So once again, you cut off, pull it through and you go back to the beginning where you start your new row. So this time, it's Lincoln 
again I'm going to do my slip knot, insert my hook and this time we are going to do a single crochet in each stitch. So no more increasing, just a single crochet. And my only word of advice here is don't do them too tight because otherwise they might curl up. So just a nice single crochet. So once again here it has closed up for me. So I'm just going to go ahead and get started in the first V that I see. And I do my single crochet. And generally when I'm doing a single crochet like this, I have a tendency to just tug it. But I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to do it as is, like so. And that way it will be a nice edge to our spinner. It will be another colour in there. But it is not going to tighten it up. And so that's what we are going to do for the rest of this row. And of course, we have multiplied our stitches by quite a few. So I will see you at the end of my row. Now, obviously, you can do this in one color. Or do row one two and three in the same color, then four and five in different colors. And here as well, I did the same configuration. So, you know, whichever color you fancy, whichever leftovers you're using, whichever color combination you are using is fine. <laughs> A few to go and there we are. I have finished my row of single crochets. Now this one here is going to be the one that we are going to be hanging it off so I suggest you leave a nice long end before cutting it off so that you have something to tie it with when you hang it up but also this will remind you not to sew this one in because obviously it's really long so now of course we are going to be sewing in our ends and as you can see this looks rather messy don't worry we will sort that in a moment so the reason why i had two needles a sharp one and a blunt one is because this one i'm going to use for making the tassel in a moment and this one of course here I am going to use for sewing in the ends so I'm just going to show you one end obviously because you know it's the same so you put it on your needle and you are going to just keep it within your color and I just go into the stitches like so making sure I do a loop the loop so I kind of go back from where I came out and just generally put it in. Don't pull it, of course, because you don't want to distort the shape. There we go, that's far enough. And I'm going to cut off. So I'm going to do that for all of them. And then I'll be back to show you how to make this really nice and tidy. <laughs> Okay, so let me show you how to make the tassels. This little box I always use for my tassels and one revolution is about 30 centimeters or 12 inches. And that's just about right for a nice tassel. So what I do is I roll it round the box like so. And when I think I have enough, I just cut it off and then I take a length of yarn, about 50 centimeters, fold it double and I am going to put my big needle on it like so. And then I go underneath all my strands onto the box like so and I pull through the yarn and I tie it really tightly 
like so. There we go. Then I take off the yarn from my box, lay it down nicely like so. Take another strand here. I'm going to lay that onto my tassel and I'm going to wind it around to just about where I want that sort of, you know, band of yarn. And of course, now you need to just wind it as tightly as you can and also in a way as neatly as you can. There we go. See? And as wide as you want. I'm going to try and... Yeah. There we go. Oops. There we are. Okay, so I like that. Then we cut this one off. Put this on your needle again. And you're going to go and put that through the band there, just underneath that band and into your tassels there. Right. There we go. And then we will cut this bit here. And I'm going to make sure that they are all about the same length or that it's even anyway. There we go. And that is ready to put on our spinner. Okay, so this is what we've got now. So we are going to have a look and see which is the back and which is the front, of course. So this is the back, this is the front. And I'm going to start with putting my end here and then laying over the rest and sort of building it up in nice circles, like so. And you will notice that it becomes sort of nice flat discs that you are putting on top of each other. Make sure you don't go smaller in your discs. So keep on sort of doing them the same size. And like I said, this one is only a short one. Um, this one here is quite a long one. Hence then your tower that you're making now with the discs will be taller as well. Oh no. Okay, <laughs> luckily it did not spring apart. <laughs> it's still in one piece. Oh my goodness, yes. So again, look here, I'm going a little bit smaller. So just open that up a bit more. There we go. And this will take you a little while, but it's worth doing it because otherwise when you hang it up, it will not hang nicely to then catch the wind and spin, of course. There we go, look, see? So you need to be able to make it nice and flat like this. And this one here already does that, of course, because it's been in that sort of configuration for a little while, look. Let me just pull that up, there we go, see? So this one will hang nicely. So again, that will need to be, look. But of course, once it's hung up, it's fine. Okay. So now we're ready to put the tassel on. Because of course, here we have a tassel. Here I made it multicolored. Here I made it just a single color. And of course, I've made this one to put on here because that was the fifth color in my pack. So I thought I would keep it with the pack. So here we have the end of our spinner. And of course we have here the four strands from our tassel. And what I'm going to do using the big needle, because that makes it easier for putting it on there, 
I am going to go into that last stitch. Let me lift it up for you. Just into there. Look anywhere basically that you can lift it in there. Then I'm going to knot this. So it's attached to it. And then I'm going to take the needle and come through my tassel down so that it becomes part of the tassel. And then the same thing with this side here. Put it on the needle and I'm going to go into the tassel past the band of yarn there. There we go. There we are. And it's attached. And of course now I have these little ends that I just need to snip off, making sure that they're the same thing. There we go. Look at that. enjoyed this tutorial thank you very much for watching and i will see you in the next one bye